I'm sure you're familiar with the phrase, out with the old, in with the new. Well, that's taken on several different meanings around here in the last few weeks, including... Greetings, one and all, and welcome to Tom's Hit Parade. By the way, I invite you to hit that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up if you like what you see, share this video with your friends, and leave me your thoughts down in the comment section. I'd really, really appreciate it. So, what do you think of my new intro? Uh, it kind of had to happen. I normally don't do a new intro uh, when I do do them. I do them at the beginning of the calendar year. But it kind of was kind of necessary this time because uh, a few weeks ago, I got a brand new computer. Uh, my first new computer in 14 years, believe it or not. Uh, yes, that's uh, twice as long as any of my previous computers have lasted. I am shocked that my last computer hung on for that long. It was originally a Windows 7 machine. It got force upgraded to Windows 10 about, well, what was it, about three or four years ago? No, no more than that, about 10 years ago. Anyway, and uh, it's kind of hung on. Uh, but I decided when I got my new computer, I was going to uh, reconsider my software options. Uh, being that I was going to have a computer that was probably five times more powerful than my last computer. Uh, so up until now, I had been using Adobe Premiere Elements as my video editing software. I've had no problems with it at all. Um, it, it may have crashed a few times, but I probably blame that on how tired my old computer was. Uh, but yeah, it was it was pretty easy to use once I got the hang of it, and it was it worked really well. But it was probably the best solution for the computer that I had at the time. Uh, I don't think I would, be, would have been able to run anything more powerful on that. Uh, so anyway, uh, I have been using for my photo editing, like when uh, doing my thumbnails, my video thumbnails, for instance, I've been using Corel Paint Shop Pro for 20 years before it was owned by Corel. I've been using it. Uh, again, works great, and I was so used to it, and I enjoyed it so much that uh, when I realized that Corel also makes a video editing software, uh, Corel Video Studio, I decided, hey, I love Paint Shop Pro so much, let's try Video Studio. And so I got picked that up, uh, downloaded it, tried it out, uh, and I got to tell you, I spent a uh, probably a cumulative eight or nine hours trying to get my old intro to work with the, uh, you know, the tricky part is the album art flyby that I used to use from, uh, you know, the horizontal flyby was one graphic. It was, you know, one screen height tall, and it was really, really, really wide. And for some reason, Corel Video Studio, unless I, there's a setting that I haven't found and I scoured the settings, um, every time I tried to zoom in so that it filled the entire screen, it was all blocky and blotchy, and I could not, for the life of me, uh, get it to sharpen up. And, uh, come back to full resolution. So um, I was kind of at my wits end. I started re completely redesigning my uh, intro graphics. Uh, and then I realized totally by accident that there is actually a free video editing software out there. It's called DaVinci Resolve. And uh, I watched, oh, eight or no, not eight or nine hours, about an hour's worth of uh, tutorial videos on YouTube and whatnot. Looked very, very promising. Uh, looked easy to use and all that stuff. So I decided, hey, it's free. I'm going to go ahead and download it and give it a try. Downloaded it the uh, yesterday morning, I think, and uh, installed it. And within one hour, first launch, I had the intro that you see, uh, that you just saw. Uh, better than I had hoped my intro would be. But uh, yeah, I, I decided to, you know, do it from, uh, you know, bottom to top, to top instead of side to side, just to just to shake things up a little bit. And uh, yes, it's got a whole bunch of uh, fun little uh, uh, title animations, 3D text animations. And I, I used one of the built-in ones uh, for my uh, my title there. So yeah, I got to tell you, um, I am very surprised that Corel Video Studio did not um, serve my needs uh, just because uh, Corel Paint Shop Pro has been doing me such good uh, for all these many years. So, by the way, this is not an endorsement of any of the products that I mentioned. Uh, I'm just telling you my experiences. No endorsements at all. Uh, but yeah, I think I will be very, very happy with DaVinci Resolve. Uh, there is a paid version, uh, but it's, first of all, it's $299. Or is it $295? <laughs> Big difference, right? Um, so, but, and yeah, 
the free version has probably 80% of the functionality. And so that extra 20% uh, gizmos, bells and whistles is probably stuff that I will never use. You know, so all I'm using it for is this janky ass YouTube channel, you know, so, uh, so yeah, I am totally happy. In fact, I, I like the software so much what I've used of it so far that I kind of want to just donate some money to them. Uh, just because, you know, it, it, it almost feels unfair that I'm getting so much functionality for free. It's just nuts. Um, I, I do still have yet to, you know, as I'm recording this to actually make a video, a full video, but I can't imagine it will, uh, I'll have any major problems. Uh, so yes, when you see this, um, I hope that you are seeing this in 1080p because I do plan on, uh, from now on, if everything goes according to plan, uh, uploading my video videos in 1080p up until now, I'd been doing just 720. So, uh, it's not going to be 60 frames per second because my tablet, uh, does not handle that. So anyway, yeah, that is the, um, the technological behind the scenes technological update uh thus far uh yeah getting used to my new first new computer in uh 14 years been a little bit uh, i mean i use a, com a windows computer at work and it's been upgraded a few times so i'm not completely uh inexperienced on uh, um, uh getting to know a new computer but uh yeah still it's a little bit of a, a adjustment period you know and uh hmm. And I'm having to uh, kind of rebuild my uh, my music music B uh, library from scratch. Also, uh, well, I use my phone for listening to music, but I store the music on my phone. I don't stream it, except for every once in a while. And uh, yes, I use the program Music B as my PC uh, music library, and I use Musicolet. Yeah, Musicolet that's to speak, say it clearly. Yes, I can speak. Uh, as my phone's music playing app, both work really, really well together. Uh, together, they, uh, music B syncs to the phone, no problem. Uh, but yes, I had to rebuild that and I've gotten a bunch of, uh, you know, I plan on building a music backup archive. I plan on uh, saving not all of my CDs because first of all, I don't have the, uh, hard drive space for all my CDs, but my most important CDs, a couple thousand of them, uh, as uh, uncompressed wave format, and then I convert them using uh, uh, the DB Power Amp suite. It's a very nice uh, suite. You have to pay for it, but it's worth the money in my opinion. I use that both to rip my CDs and convert them into uh, 256k MP3s for use on, uh, on my phone. So, so yeah, that's uh, I'm kind of getting myself all uh, now that I've got the tools. Um, hoping to build a nice little uh, backup music archive in case anything happens to my CD collection and uh, all that stuff. So, yeah. Anyway, uh, so yes, that's up. That's it for my music or my uh, technological update. The main part of this video is a thrift store haul. Once again, yes, I actually took this past week off from work because I had originally planned on buying my computer last weekend and then spending this week off of, off from work setting it up and all that. But actually, uh, things happened that I was able to pick up the computer a couple of weeks early, spent the last couple of weekends getting it 85% set up, so I didn't have to do much work this week. I was able to relax. Uh, Mom and I shampooed the uh, carpets at, uh, the, in the house here. It's something that's needed to be done for a few years. Uh, so yeah, did some housework, of course, which is, you know, inevitable. Uh, adulting can be hard, you know? You, you gotta, you know, you gotta do all the adult stuff, but, you know, have a little bit of fun too. So, uh, yes, I was able to relax a good part of the weekend and do a, uh, circuit of the, uh, local St. Vinny's thrift stores, as you're about to see here. So yes, I picked up a good number of CDs. Uh, let me, let me pivot here to, uh, get the, uh, rack situ situated. Yes, I've got the CD rack. Yeah, I've got a bit to go through here, as you can see. So yes, uh, as I usually do, I try to put these CDs into kind of uh, categories flowing from one to the other. A uh, couple of artists that I uh, I am aware of, but have never given a shot to. Here we have Joe Diffie with his album, The Third Rock from the Sun. I always got a kick out of that song. And uh, I was actually a little bit disappointed when the, uh, the TV sitcom Third Rock from the Sun debuted, and they didn't use that song. I have to wonder, I never looked up, I wonder, did they try to get the rights to use that song and just couldn't, or I don't know. But uh, yeah, never listened to, listened to a Joe Diffie album. 
Uh, so I thought I'd give that one a try. And then we have Julio Iglesias with uh, Starry Night. Uh, the title track is a cover of the... Um, not Van Morrison. Uh, oh, what's the name? American Pie Don McLean song, uh, Starry Night. And he's got a bunch of other covers on here. Can't Help Falling in Love, the uh, song that Elvis made famous. Mona Lisa, the song that uh, uh, Nat King Cole popularized. Uh, Yesterday When I Was Young, another um, uh, great American songbook standard. Uh, so yeah, several other songs on here. I think I've tried an, a Julio Iglesias album once or twice, and it just never stuck. So maybe this one will. It's got a good selection of songs on here. Now, this next one was actually new and sealed. And this guy apparently is a bit of a polarizing figure. Some people love him. Some people hate him. I've never given him a try. Louis Capaldi. Uh, this is his album, Broken by Desire to be Heavenly Sent. I think one of the uh, things that makes him a little bit of a, a uh, roast worthy is the names of his albums. A little weird. But uh, yeah, I thought I'd give him a try. Uh, with that, I mean, 99 cents, every one of these CDs, 99 cents. How can you go wrong? And I've got a few artists here that I have never heard of before. We have Ilse Delange. I think that's how you pronounce it. She is a, I looked her up, a Dutch singer, uh, either Dutch or Norwegian, Dutch, I think. Uh, but she's also uh, been a little bit popular in the States. So I thought I'd give her the the light dimmed a little bit. Sorry about that. Uh, but yeah, this is a Greatest Hits album. Here I am, 1998 to 2003. So I thought I'd give her a shot. Oh, actually, uh, oh, Made in Germany by Warner Music Europe. So maybe she's German. I can't remember. But I did look her up. And then we have a, uh, I'm assuming she is a jazz vocalist because she is on the Concord label, or this album was on the Concord label, Maya Sharp. Uh, self-titled album. I've never heard of, heard of her before, so looking forward to give, giving her a try. Then we have uh, Renee Olstead, another uh, female singer I've never, uh, I'm not familiar with. I, I've probably heard of her at some point. But uh, yeah, this one has uh, several um, classic pop songs. Uh, is You Is or Is You Ain't My Baby? And uh, Summertime, that's the Nina Simone. I'm sure Nina, I'm sure dozens of uh, female singers from back then uh, recorded it. So, um, Someone to Watch Over Me featuring Chris Boti on trumpet. Uh, that was actually one of the selling points. I like Chris Boti. Uh, Breaking Up is Hard to Do, the Paul Anka song. And A Sentimental Journey, What a Difference a Day Makes. So yeah, a good selection of songs. So I'm looking forward to giving that one a shot. Now this one, let me put the rack down for a second for this one. This one looked really interesting. This was also new and sealed. Uh, Carl Hancock Rux is his name, and uh, Rux Review is the name of the album, as you can see up here. And the hype sticker uh, made it sound really interesting, and I actually pulled off the hype sticker and put it on the inside of the uh, tray here. Carl unleashes a torrent of paper bag poetry and postmodern hip-hop music. The Ritualistic Blues of Self-Awakening, Coon Songs, sorry, that's written on here, I'm reading it word for word, uh, and Schizophrenic Soul Sestinas, I'm not sure what that word means, uh, From the Hellacious to the Hilarious and Back Again, one of the most engaging one-man shows you're likely to see all year. So as you can imagine, that hype sticker uh, piqued my interest. So, uh, I'm not afraid to give hip hop a try, especially when it's hip hop that pushes the ba the boundaries into adjacent genres. So, yeah, I will have to. Uh, I'll see if I can remember to let you guys know how that Carl Hancock Rux CD is. And I found a couple of uh, American Idol uh, alumni here. Uh, I was not watching the show in its first season when Tamira Gray was a finalist. Sorry about the glare from the lens. Uh, but yeah, this was her uh, first and I think only album, The Dreamer. So looking forward to, uh, I've seen clips of her singing uh, in, uh, you know, highlights from American Idol's first season. But I was watching American Idol. I think this was the uh, Chris versus Adam uh, season when uh, Allison Irahita was a finalist. 
it was either the Chris versus Adam or the David versus David season that uh, she was a finalist. So, uh, yeah, I always liked her. Something about her that I liked. So, uh, yeah, give those two a try. Now, this one I actually already had because she's one of my favorite female uh, singers. But this is a, a version that I didn't have. Uh, Steady Pull by Jonathan Brooke. And this actually has three bonus tracks on it that uh, the version I have does not. So uh, looking forward to checking that one out. It's all got a couple of scratches on it, but uh, nothing that I think would interfere with it, uh, its playability. So, yeah. And again, 99 cents. And then this one I had had a long time ago, but uh, back when it was a new release, but just for some reason just didn't stick. But I decided to give it a shot again. And again, this was new and sealed. Um, Power of Peace with, by the Isley Brothers and Santana. So, uh, yeah, got, figured I had to give that a, sh a shot. I've come to enjoy the Isley Brothers more uh, since I tried that CD the first time. So there you go. And then this one, uh, Symphonica by George Michael. Apparently this was George Michael's last studio work, as well as um, Phil Ramone's last studio work before they both passed away. So, uh, I guess it's, uh, I'm not sure if it's a live recording or not, but it is some of his songs and maybe some of, uh, yeah, other people's songs. First time ever I saw your face and, uh, brother, can you spare a dime and stuff, um, done with a symphony orchestra as the title of the album implies. So that should be good. And then some, uh, instrumental rock here, uh, fire garden by Steve Vai. Uh, actually this is half instrumental and half vocal. So that uh, could be fun to listen to. Never actually tried a Steve Vai album before. As much as I like Joe Satriani, I've never really given a serious try to Steve Vai. I don't know why. Uh, rhyming was unintended there. And then we have, I decided I had to give this guy a, a shot, uh, Greatest Hits album by Neil Sedaka. Yes, one of the uh, kitschy, more punchline artists, uh, you know, yes. Not, you know, not, uh, he doesn't deserve the, uh, being a punchline like that. You know, he's got a good voice and, you know, so good songs. The, uh, oh, he does Stairway to Heaven. I hope that's not a cover of the, uh, um, Zeppelin song. That could, that could be a little dicey there. Um, and then of course, Calendar Girl, uh, his, uh, big hit singular, Breaking Up is Hard to Do. And then I thought I'd uh, give a little blues a try. Uh, Willie Dixon, uh, poet of the blues. It's got a good selection of songs on there. And I just realized I've forgotten to show you the back sides of these CDs, which is something I've been trying to remember to start doing. But uh, I, I'm halfway through the stack now, so I'm not going to go back. Uh, and then another one from the Capital Collector series. This is The Letterman. This was a, a group from the uh, 40s. 40s, 50s, uh, did a bunch of classic pop songs. I've got several uh, installments in this uh, Capital Collector series. series. Uh, so I thought I'd add to it and take a drink for a second. Throat's getting a little dry here. And then we have Etta James. I've always liked Etta James, and this is one of her later albums called Time After Time. She covers a bunch of uh, classic pop standards. And well, another reason I am not showing you the backs of these is because I'm holding this rack with my other hand. So it's a little difficult to uh, see. You don't get a very good shot of the back. So next time. And then we have, this is a CD I had a long, long time ago. Actually, I think I might've had it on cassette and never on CD, but this is a vocal jazz group called the New York Voices. And uh, they're, they're, they're good. I, uh, I enjoyed and I mean, some of the, a uh, couple of the songs on this track listing, I remember uh, from way back then, never, ha not having heard them in 25 years. Uh, so yeah, I'm uh, looking forward to giving this one a shot again. I, re I remember I was not much into vocal pop or, j or vocal jazz back when I first had this album. So uh, I think I will have a different experience with this one uh, now. And then we have... Uh, I have a shorter version of this guy's greatest hits, but uh, this is 24 songs and more than double the uh, one that I have, so I had to pick it up. Frankie Yankovic and his Yanks. 
uh, his their greatest hits. So yeah, twenty four songs. Yes, uh, the the Polka King, and um, contrary to popular belief, he is not related to Weird Al Yankovic. No, I've seen uh, at least a couple of times. I've seen a sticker on a Frankie Yankovic CD uh, with uh, you know Weird Al's dad written on it. No, no relation. His father was Nick, and his mother was Mary. Uh, and Frank was not even an uncle or a cousin, just no relation. Uh, Al jokingly said that uh, his parents made him take accordion lessons because they felt there should be at least one more accordion playing Yankovic in the world. That was uh, probably not uh, an authentic uh, uh, telling from him, but anyway. Uh, now we're on to a little bit of jazz here. Uh, Tom Scott. This is, uh, he's a saxophonist, as you can see. Uh, I've got a couple albums that uh, he uh, is on the backing band of, but I've never checked out a, um, you know, an album of his as the lead man, the front man. So looking forward to that. And then this is the fourth album of this guy that I have. He is uh, from Oregon, or I don't know if he was born in Oregon, but he uh, at least grew up and went to school in Oregon. Tom Grant. Uh, jazz artist. Uh, this is his album, Instinct. I believe this was his. Oh, no, this was not his first album. This was his first album after he left the Verve Forecast label. Label. So this is the next album of, of his in the sequence that I have. So that worked out well. And then uh, this is actually this guy's first album. And this is the fourth or fifth album of his that I, I have come to own. Brian Culbertson. Uh, one of his CDs, one or two, were in my sister's collection, and that's how I found out about this guy. And uh, so he's, he's he's pretty good. I like him. And then we have, I've got a few of his individual studio albums, so I thought I would pick up a compilation of his. John Tesh, this is a Wyndham Hill retrospective, uh, 10 tracks from a few of his Wyndham Hill albums. So what can I say? I've got a soft spot for uh, cheesy well, as you can see with that and uh, Neil Sadaka, I kind of uh, have a soft spot for the the punchline artists. Uh, then here we have, this guy is not a punchline, art, punchline artist. Vangel is it Vangelis or Vangelis? I think both pronunciations are um, technically legitimate, but I'm not sure if uh, anyone is preferable, uh, preferred by him or uh, whatever. But anyway, his album Direct. I have his uh, his themes compilation. I don't think I have the Chariots of Fire soundtrack. I, I actually don't have any soundtracks by him. At least not yet. And then here we have a New Age album from the Private Music label, a label that I was very fond of back in my New Age phase. Uh, this is uh, an artist named Sanford Ponder, and the album is called Etosha, Private Music in the Land of Dry Water. I can only assume that that is how the private music label got its name, was from this. And uh, I, I maybe this is actually private music's first release, which would be kind of cool to have. I have probably a dozen uh, of other albums on that label. So Yanni, uh, Patrick O'Hearn, Tangerine Dream did a few uh, albums on private, private music, and uh, probably a couple other artists I can't think of. Now this one, I was kind of excited to find, and... No, this was not sealed, but uh, it, it is like new. I mean, pretty much all these CDs are, are like new. Um, and I'm hoping I'm pronouncing this name properly. Isata Kane Mason. Uh, she and her brother, uh, Sheku, they performed at, was it um, Harry's, Harry and Meghan's wedding, I think. And uh, they, they kind of gained some, gained some fame uh, for that performance. And uh, yes, this is her album, Summertime, and it's got some Gershwin stuff on here, including the title track, Summertime, uh, an Aaron Copeland composition, and a few others, uh, Samuel Barber, and a couple of other things. So I was very anxious tr to try this out, uh, and I have seen, uh, I think I've seen Sheku, one of Sheku's CDs at House of Records in the used section, so hopefully that will still be there when I go back there tomorrow. And uh, this next one, this one was still sealed, uh, and it is uh, uh, has contributions or is uh, done in part by an artist that I am have developed a fondness for in recent months, Yo-Yo Ma. 
This is the Silk Road Ensemble featuring Yo-Yo Ma with the album A Playlist Without Borders. Now, if there's an album that uh, an album title that would grab me, it is A Playlist Without Borders. Uh, so I, I'm really looking forward to listening to this. This is not, um, you know, traditional, uh, you know, the, the more famous classical music. I'm, I'm sure it's classical in a way, uh, but just probably more contemporary or or at least lesser known classical uh, composers and compositions. So looking forward to listening to that. Now, this next one is a four disc set, and it was still 99 cents. So, you know, 25 cents per CD. And this is Sony Classical. Uh, this is part of their soundtrack for a, uh, soundtrack for a Century series. And most of them were two disc sets, but uh, since classical, you know, pieces are so long, uh, fewer, of the, fewer of them fit on the CD. The disc's falling over. Uh, so they decided to make a four disc set out of it. Uh, yeah, the, the actual tracks are not listed on here, just the composers and whatnot and performers and stuff. So I figured uh, I've got a couple of classical um, compilations in my library, but I figured, you know, having a nice big beefy four disc one uh, would uh, probably give me about all the classical music I could ever need. So, uh, yeah, looking forward to listening to that one, to all of these, honestly. And this one looked really interesting. Uh, I'm about to go into the soundtracks, but this one was kind of sort of soundtrack adjacent because it features uh, actors, uh, actors and uh, other TV personalities. It's called The Band from TV. It features James Denton, uh, Bob Guinea, I think I'm pronouncing that properly, Bonnie Somerville, Greg Grunberg, and Hugh Laurie. So yes, um, apparently they formed a band and uh, did some music. And this is actually a CD and a DVD. I think. Yeah, I believe it's a CD and a DVD. So this one I will show you the back uh, cover of. So, so yeah, it was just too, I'm, I'm not a huge particular fan of any of these uh, individual people. It just, it looked too intriguing to, uh, to pass up and to uh, not pick up and give a try, especially for 99 cents. And uh, then we're kind of these two next uh, next two things are also kind of soundtrack adjacent. Uh, well, you'll see why as I show them to you. Uh, this is Beautiful Hollywood. This is an album by the Cincinnati Pops Orchestra uh, conducted by Eric Kunzel. I've got six or seven of uh, the Kunzel Cincinnati Pop CDs thus far. I don't know why I didn't have this one. Well, actually, I do know because all the others are almost al entirely or almost entirely sci-fi and fantasy related. So. This is more, uh, you know, romantic epics and uh, other uh, contemporary movies. Forrest Gump, A River Runs Through It, Jerry Maguire, Legends of the Fall, Bridges of Madison County, uh, Schindler's List. It's got a John Williams track on there, so Schindler's List. And uh, Rudy, uh, Free Willy. So, yeah, I figured it was good. And I've always been happy with the Kunzel Cincinnati Pops CDs. They've, been, uh, they've always been great. So uh, I have no doubts about uh, being able to enjoy this one. And then I've got uh, the next CD in my Dave Cause library. This is at the movies. And as you can imagine, it is it uh, features him performing songs made famous in movies. And uh, Deja Vu here, Schindler's List is on this one also. I, I, I hesitate a little bit at this one because, you know, Schindler's List performed on saxophone. Don't know how that's going to turn out, but uh, I like Dave Cause, so uh, maybe he will work some magic with it. But there are, of course, themes that you can imagine that are, were made for saxophone, like the Pink Panther theme. Love that one. Uh, Over the Rainbow from The Wizard of Oz. Uh, Moon River, As Time Goes By from Casablanca. Uh, Somewhere from West Side Story, The Shadow of Your Smile, The Way We Were. Uh, it Might Be You by, uh, from Tootsie. Uh, and that one features Vanessa Williams on vocals. And, uh, oh, The Shadow of Your Smile features Johnny Mathis on vocals and Chris Boti on trumpet. So uh, A Whole New World from Aladdin featuring Donna Summer on vocals. So, yeah, I w I'm very happy to uh, to give this one a shot. I was very happy to see that one there. And then we have Volume 2 of the soundtrack from Smallville, the, uh, the, the telling of the uh, Youth of Superman TV series from... Uh, the late 90s, 2000s. 
Uh, I have, I've had volume one for quite a while, uh, never picked up volume two, or maybe I did at once and then got rid of it in a CD pruning years ago. But uh, yeah, I was happy to add that one. Then we have a collection of TV themes from NBC, uh, Must See TV. I had to pick this one up uh, from 2003. Uh, yes, uh, 50 different theme songs. This is on uh, TVT Records, which did way back in the 80s, late 80s, early 90s, they did, they, did, they, did, uh, bleh, they did a series of CDs called Television's Greatest Hits. And uh, being a fan of TV themes from as long back as I can remember, I picked those up, really enjoyed them. So this is kind of a sequel or follow-up to those CDs. Uh, a, a sequel many, many years uh, after the original run. And I've got three titles left here, and these were I think, in in my opinion, the biggest scores from this uh, this haul here. Here we have Captain Underpants, the movie soundtrack. It's got a Weird Al song on it, the the um, Captain Underpants theme by Weird Al Yankovic. Had to pick it up for that. It's also got an Adam Adam Lambert song on there. Uh, think, and I don't know if that is the uh, cover of the Aretha Franklin song or something else, but uh, yeah. Had to pick it up, and I think the Captain Underpants theme is on the medium rarities bonus disc that I got with the uh, Complete Works Weird Al box set years ago. But still, I had to. Ninety nine cents, come on. And then, uh, speaking of John Williams, I'm still kind of in shock that I found this one. It was actually it was you know just right there sitting in the racks. It wasn't even in the uh, the locked up choice items uh, bin that they have uh, raised prices on here. This was 99 cents like everything else. The OG Return of the Jedi soundtrack. Yeah. It's got a couple of light scratches on it, but uh, otherwise it is in perfect condition. Yeah. This was an, an original uh, 1983 run from back in the day. Yeah. Uh, not sure yet if I'll keep this or if I will uh, maybe flip it on Discogs because I do have the remastered version uh, single disc version, you know, the same uh, track listing and stuff. So, who knows? I may end up keeping it. I think I might be, I might be just a little bit too much of a John Williams fan to give this one up. But I was, like I said, I was shocked to find that uh, there on the racks. And then this one, I had actually been looking for this one uh, off and on for a couple of years now. I had a version that was, I think it was on the freebie shelf, or it was in the one dollar bin somewhere, and picked it up. Uh, I may do with it because it had several scratches on it, but I, I've kind of been keeping my eye out looking for not only a better condition copy of this, but I actually managed to find the anniversary edition with bonus tracks. Where the Sidewalk Ends, a collection of Shel Silverstein's poetry and songs. Yes, I, I cannot believe I found this one. Just this. If I had come home with just this, it would have been worth the entire, running the entire crawl of the St. Vinny stores. But yes, this has... Uh, 36 tracks and 11 bonus tracks on it uh, from the version that I uh, that this is replacing. So yes, I was very happy to have it. I, I have uh, a light in the attic, the other one. I've had that one for a while. So I'd been looking for this one to, to complete the set. But uh, yeah, was very, very, very happy to have found that one. So quite a haul, wouldn't you say? And so that'll do it for this video. Be sure to like it if you liked it. And before you go, drop me some feedback in the comment section. I'd love to know what you think. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell icon to catch my future videos, and hit my username to browse my old videos. Links to my socials and my favorite fellow YouTubers are in the description below. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. And remember, life's too short to be a music snob.